Coming up, I travel way out west to see some furry little critters. That is my first ever wild boiling. I'm hunting high and low for one of our rarest mammals. I think we're getting pretty close now. We're close. And if there ever was a truer word said. You're not going to find them sitting on the lounge at home, are you? Australia's great variety of wildlife is celebrated around the world. But we have the worst mammal extinction rate on Earth. This is the Dryandra woodland in Western Australia. A bush like this once covered a vast amount of the state, but nowadays it's restricted to tiny little pockets. I'm here for a very specific reason. When I was six years old, I watched a children's program with my dad. And in that show was a species of Australian marsupial called a numbat. A numbats are arguably one of the world's rarest mammals. I've never seen one in the wild, and this is one of the only places you can. That's exactly why I'm here. Rob and John are a couple of mates from way back. They live and breathe Dryandra and all that live in it. So before we head out, they want to show me some little critters they've taken into their care. Here's Jono, he's got a little surprise for you, mate. What do you got? Oh, a couple of these here. You're kidding. Yeah, yeah, he's a little good. About the time for the feed too now, so it's a good time. You want to have a go at him? I do, is he going to... Oh, look at that. How old is he, Rob? Hello, Hello. mate. Oh, I reckon probably about 60 days, 70 days. Yeah. And what have you got? This one's a bit older, about 600 grams now. Oh, they both look great. There you go, give me one of them, Kimbo. So what's this, a little bit this of farrix? Just farrix baby okay. food. Okay, oh, look she at that. He loves it. Look at that. And what's the story? Where have they come from? Oh, they've just been orphaned in the woodland, mate. So yep. come into care. Hopefully, they would grow up all right and go back here. It'd be neat, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full good circle. End. That's good. And isn't it wild to think that they once were common on yeah. mainland? And yeah. Just relisted four weeks ago or something, mate. It's critically endangered again. Back on the list. Well, doesn't that make these two all the more important? Yeah. You can pop her in there for a minute if you want, mate. And she yeah. can have a little stand up. Oh, the bottle's bit of warming up. So she's not ready for the big open space. Nah, you just no. keep her in a little playpen. There you go. <laughs> she is so small. Yeah. When you think about things this small and delicate, eh, it's no wonder that cats and foxes and that have such a big impact in it. Well, what chance does that have yeah. against a fox or a cat? Yeah. Very sad. All right, we'll get this bottle for her now, Tim. You can be warmed up. up. OK. Now, I fancy myself at giving bottles, but they can be tricky. Yeah, yeah. Does she, she did. feed well? Uh, she, when she gets hold of it, mate, she'll drain it quick. Well, she knows how to drink. Yeah, she goes all right, eh? That's brilliant. And the best part is that you guys are here, and there really is a, a, a chance for them to get back into the wild. Yeah. All right, well, I think she's done. There we go. So even though they're different ages, they'll probably end up in the soft release enclosure together yeah. and su they'll support each other at that age. Yeah. Well, that was a warm start to the morning. Amazing. But you know I'm here for one thing. Numbat, mate. You got it right. Go numbat. Let's go find one, eh? Yeah. Really got to find you your first one, haven't we, mate? Yeah, I need a numbat, mate. You need a bat. I've wanted to see a numbat since I was six years old. Well, when you see your first one, you get that excited. The feeling doesn't change when you see your twentieth one. Still exactly the same. Finding a numbat is no easy task. They're rare. One of the rarest mammals on the planet. Rob and John say there's been times when they've driven all day without seeing one, so it looks like we're settling in for the long haul. Numbers are critically low. Back in the early 1980s, there were as few as 50 left. From being widespread across southern Australia, Dryandra was the only place you could see them. Something had to be done. Loss of habitat and the wily old fox were once again the problem. A program was put in place to eradicate the foxes, which was a massive success. For a time, the numbat population soared, but without the foxes, 
another feral pest moved in. You guessed it, cats. It's hard for the little fellas, isn't it? A lot of all the natives. So you remove the fox, do a good deed, the cat numbers go up and it's equally as bad. Yep. It's like a wave continually crashing on their heads, one wave after another. And every time you come up for air, another wave another hits. Something else. It's believed Dryandra's numbat population is back down to around 50 individuals at the moment. That's down from a high of 400. 50 individuals. So it's, it's a critical point now to get them back. Going from one time where they used to catch them out of here to relocate them to start other populations, yep. back down to having to concentrate on getting this population going again, really important. After a couple of hours in the car, my eyes are burning. So when I see some bare rock, there's only one thing on my mind. I'm in thick, dense mallee scrub, and I've just spotted this big granite outcrop. Now, an outcrop like this is pretty rare in this habitat. So I know that's a mecca for reptiles. There's loose rock sitting on the top, and if I go and gently flip a few of them, I reckon I might find something. Look at that. We got a snake. Just get a little stick. Come here, little fella. Oh, he's off. Come here, mate, settle down. Now, I'm pretty sure it's a Mitchell's short tailed snake. Pretty sure. He's got a bright red tongue, redder than most snakes you'd see. Now, they're venomous, they pack a punch. Maybe not lethal, but enough that I do not want to get bitten. Hey, pal. Hey, buddy. Hey. Ah, beautiful. A new species for me. I'm really happy about that. Are these smaller snakes? Just like our mammals, they fall prey to foxes and cats. To find him here is a good sign. He's a little elapid, front fang venomous. He'd be feeding on skinks and geckos that also live on this rock flat. Look at that tongue, going crazy. Now, he doesn't think that there's food. He's sniffing out if I'm a threat, if I'm gonna eat him or not. I'm not gonna eat you, mate. Now, be it a, a lapid, front fang venomous, he grabs onto something like a skink or a gecko, whacks that venom in, waits for it to die and swallows it whole. Australia's got so many of these small venomous snakes. To find one that I've never seen before, that's just a bonus. The important thing is, Put him right back where I found him. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. Don't you open that mouth at me. That's a great find. I'm going to put him right back where he was. Okay, now this is his home. First, I'll fix it. And you can go back, matey. Right where you were. That got the heart pumping. What a find. It's beautiful, mate. Yeah, it's a lovely place. Beautiful. You know? And the bit of rain, the termites are going to be up a bit, mate. Our chances could be great. So you want to look, look at all your little wood piles, all the open areas. Like, if something moves, your peripheral vision's going to pick it up. It's fair to say, we're looking for a needle in the haystack. We're looking for a needle in a stack of needles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that there? Tree creeper. Tree, yeah. Hey, how many of them you see by the end of the day? Oh, my mind's playing tricks on me. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing numbats it. everywhere. It'll do it, mate. By the end of the day, you haven't got anything nice to say about tree creepers. So tell me, the trees, the eucalypts, the termites eat them out, hollow them out, tree falls over, numbat home? Yep. OK. But the, the, num the, the actual ones that feed out the trees and create the hollows aren't really their main food ones. What are these, Rob? That's him, mate. That's what we're looking for. That's number digging. That's number. Yeah, yeah, look. Ah, our first see. signs. He's followed the gallery. 
He's got a big spot here. There must might be something. So we've got subterranean termites here. They're not the big mound that we always no. classically think of. They're underground. Yeah. And so numbats here. Yep. Little paws, dig. Yep. Long tongue goes in. Whip them out. Yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah, twenty odd. This is what for us to have a look at, mate. I know, we keep, keep looking, hey? concentrate around here. All this fallen timber, mate, it's great for them. Yeah, that's what it's all about, hey, yeah. that's home. Well, you've got, you got everything, haven't you? You've got the termites, you've got the food, you've got the bolt holes, you've got a nice, warm, dry spot. So what's the biggest threat to this timber, fire or people illegally removing it? Probably the second one, mate, sad to say. Firewood at home, hey? Firewood at home. So it's reasonable that we could have a nomad in there now. It'd be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's big enough, stick your head and have a look, mate. Yeah, it's a whopper. You know, I can't see to the middle. Nothing in here, only one thing for it. Back in the car and start the hunt again. This is a real patience game. Yeah. You know, like, you, you don't have a headache by the end of the day, you're not looking hard <laughs> enough, mate. I'm not worried. I expected that this was going to take time, but yeah. this is the case, hey? You just look and look. You just got to keep going, mate. The way I look at it, mate, you're not going to find them sitting on the lounge at home, are you? Yeah. You just keep going until you do it. It gets to the stage sometimes where you get a little bit disheartened because you look for so long, but, you know, it can change like that. You love it, don't you, mate? Yeah. I came out here one time, 2008, seen my first number. I've come back nearly every weekend ever since, mate. It's that enthusiasm that keeps me going. We've been out for six hours now. If it wasn't for Rob, I'd be well on my way to thinking this was a mission impossible. Tim, no mate, no mate, stop, 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 Where stop. Mate? Just over there, it's went in this pile of logs. Where is he? Where is he, mate, in this pile of logs? Yep. As always, when it comes to spotting, there's nothing like good oil, and Rob's is amongst the best. Mate, you Hey, you got it. Unbelievable. Good stuff. Unbelievable. Oh, look there. Just going through the bush. It's been a long day, but a wild numbat sighting. It certainly makes all those hours driving worth it. And tonight I'm promised a wild woily experience with John. This could turn out to be one of my best days ever. Right in the very heart of Dryandra, there's a sanctuary dedicated to Western Australian native animals that face extinction. John's going to show me around. How big's this enclosure? Four hectares. Four hectares. Yeah. So they can feed themselves to some extent, but you still substitute. We have to supplement feed. Yeah. They can't find everything in four hectares. Okay. The woily on the left is more commonly known as the brush-tailed bedong. On the right is the burrowing bedong, which is unique in the kangaroo family, as it's the only one that lives underground. Looks like we've got a bellaby coming in, Tim. One of my favourites. Oh, they are amazing, aren't they? Very unusual. And they're true earth movers of the bush, hey? Yeah. They're tough bilbies. They're hard to hold. Yeah. You know, they're, a, they're yeah. a tough animal. Yeah, yeah. Just no match for a fox. No match for a fox or a cat. Barnamia's original concept was to breed populations of various species that were once common to the area, then release them into the wild. The issue is that age-old problem I keep returning to, cats. Each time the Barnamia team have tried to release any of the natives, the ferals have wiped them out. We have tried a couple of times, yeah. and um, that was the original intention of everything, just to get them back out. But with the cat numbers rising, we had to crash the whole program. There's one thing to see in the enclosure, Tim, but shall we see if we can find one in the wild? Really? I reckon we have a good chance. Oh, make me very happy. OK, let's do it. Good. It was beautiful driving through here in the day. It's stunning at night. Yeah. Spectacular place. And whilst the numbats are active of the daytime, this is when it comes to life, eh? Exactly, exactly. The secret world. There we go. What's that? Just up on the right, Wiley. Wiley. Wiley, Wiley, Matt. Got it? 
That is my first ever wild boily. Hit me. Good on you. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it up here. Brilliant. Brilliant. Ah. And was that a little young at foot there? Uh, that was he? definitely young at heel. There's two of them with one following behind, yeah. Right. Well, after that, my blood's pumping. John's promise of a woily honeypot is going to have to be pretty special to beat that. The woilies, is that then we can just hear, just tap, 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 yep. tap in the background? Yeah, there's one coming in now. Oh. There's one coming it's a woily. in now. It's a woily. Just like the numbat, the woolly populated a vast area of Australia up until European settlement. But by the 1920s, it had disappeared from much of its range. With just 5,500 thought to be left in the wild, they're now critically endangered. So the two little orphans John and Rob are caring for will be a small but very significant addition to the population. But the woolies don't have this place all to themselves. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Doesn't get any better than They're that. They're not fair if we Brush tail possum is one of my favourite. I know I mean, they're common, but... I know. Well, people ignore the common stuff sometimes and they don't realise it. Got another possum? <whistles> and then the... Mast owl. That was. A mast owl. That'll be knocking off the mammals, but yeah. Australian, I mean, yeah. it's a native itself. It's got to eat. Where did the old whaley go? I'd heard that mast owl. It was, yeah. <laughs> so for fun, you come and sit here for hours and watch woilies. It's better than television. I, I, <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> What's the most you've had in here at one time? Oh, yeah. The maximum that we could really count is four. Four. It's pretty remarkable that a population that's so small worldwide can you get four in here. It's a hot spot. It really is, like you say, the honey spot. Next day, and for once, I've had a bit of a lie-in. No point getting up at the crack of dawn if numbats are still grabbing some shut-eye. This is Tony Friend. He's been instrumental in the numbats revival over the past 30-odd years. With numbers countrywide below 1,000, he's doing all he can to help them through this current crisis. Well, the key now is managing the predators. Foxes are reasonably easy to deal with, with baiting. And now cats, which have sort of moved in behind the foxes and much harder to manage. And that's where our challenge is now. Tony is using a radio tracker to locate numbats he's previously caught and collared. He visits Dryandra on a regular basis to take data about the health and well-being of the population. And that's what we're going to do today. Woodland like this once covered the southern half of Western Australia. Today, Dryandra is all that's left a small but extremely important island in a sea of agricultural land known as the wheat belt. Tony knows there's at least a couple of numbats that live in this area. Hopefully his scanner can pick up a signal. That's a beep. You got something? Yep. Yep. It's very weak. You know, that's straight over there. Thank goodness for that. I'm not sure I could do another six hour search for one of these critters. Probably 100 metres, I reckon. It's a bit hard to tell, but uh, she's still moving, so we'll probably have to follow for a little, little bit. OK. Oh, I think we're getting pretty close now. We're close? Yep, yep, that signal is screaming. Um, be one of these logs. No, it's not that one. Oh, so it should be... Could be this one. It'll be inside the log. Yep, well, just, just this, and I'm not going to be able to tell exactly where it is. Yep, strong there. Yep. You're telling so me there's a number right there. there. That's right. Well, it's a collar anyway, but... <laughs> yep. Oh, that's... So she's gone in this end, I think. And we just need to put a trap over here. And uh, then just a matter of waiting. Do you know this individual? Yes. She's got four young. She was caught in uh, on the 17th of January this year, and she already had Four young, wow. tiny little, tiny little rice bubbles, and um, hopefully we'll be able to find those four young and measure them. Once we've set the trap, it's a waiting game. I'm told there's something like a thousand left, 
that's captive in enclosures and wild like here in Dryandra. But is it enough? Well, it's, it's not many animals for a whole, whole species. I mean, you're talking giant panda, there are 1,500 of them, and they're held up as the most endangered thing around. Um, no, we're dealing with low numbers, and we need to be, I mean, 5,000 would be a little bit more comfortable. Right. I might be able to see her inside there. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah, there she is. You got her. Came out. Whoa. Was pretty fortunate. We've got. Wow, that's great, mate. <laughs> There's a number. This is amazing. Just look at those markings and look at that, Joey's. No time to hang about though. We've got to get this girl processed and released as soon as possible. Uh, let it go. It's no wonder these critters captivate the likes of Tony, Rob, and John. They truly are amazing animals. And did you know they're the closest living relative to the Tasmanian tiger? Excited to see us, aren't you? I'm so glad these guys are around to make sure the numbat doesn't end up the same way. Very coy there. No, that's another girl. Yeah, four girls. Four girls, wow. Well, that's good for the population. The numbats are only here thanks to the hard work put in by Tony and his team and the long-term planning at the Department of Parks and Wildlife here in WA. Different hurdles will come and go, just like they've done in the past. So it's important the resources are there to stop the numbers of Australian extinct animals rising. What do we do now? Well, we can let her go. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind letting her go. Really? That'd be great, yeah. I would love to do that. <laughs> be a pleasure. OK. All right. All right, this looks like the spot. That's good. Right. If you just put your hand down over her back and um, hold her, pull her gently out of the bag and... Is onto the, the ground. Where your That's, hand is? Yeah, heads that way. That's it. She's already going. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Mate. That was fantastic. Well that done. That has made my life. <laughs> well, <laughs> good on you. Well done, you did good. <laughs> uh, that's spectacular, mate. Yeah. Well, good on you because. I mean, they're here.